singing, Holy Spirit, thou art welcomed in this place. If that touched me in a, such a strong way here and brought me into oneness with the Holy Spirit here, if we sing it out here, it's going to do the same thing. And healing can take place. That's his style. Today we're going to be talking about healing. And, and, and have you noticed that the atmosphere has completely changed in here from about just a few minutes ago? If you think about it, go ahead and sense it. Now get it. <laughs> First thing I want to deal with is this question here. Who is Jesus today? And you know, we, I've been talking about Jesus all year. Every sermon has been about Jesus this year. Because... The Holy Spirit said to me, too many people know Jesus of the Bible, but they don't know who Jesus is today. If you talk to somebody and you're witnessing to them, you're letting them know about Jesus, they're like, well, who's Jesus? Well, you know, he was born of a birth. I know that. And he died. I know that. He rose. I know this. I did go to church. <laughs> what is your relationship like with Jesus right now? Does he talk to you? Is he still king? What is he doing? Who is Jesus right now? Most people don't know. What is Jesus doing right now? A lot of people have no clue. That's why this is so important. His message and authority still lives on through some of us today. And this is important. Oh, I got all this from the Holy Spirit now. Authorized and empowered by him only for those who love and obey him. Glory. Only for those who love and obey him. Um, you know, Jesus will never accept the part-time lover. That's to be full time. If you want to be empowered and authorized, you got to be full time. Now I know some people have giftings. Gifts come without repentance. That's why when people talk about the healing ministry, the prophetic ministry, the apostolic on my life, I, I don't get excited because it's the personal relationship that really matters. That's how I tell my sons and daughters here, just because you got a prophecy right. You finally got one right. You prophesied and it happened. Just because you got a prophecy right don't mean you next door to heaven and you're on your way. God will use you and still send you to hell. Because you better know it. You better know it. Because some, some people are goats. They stubborn, they hard-headed, they don't want to follow you, but God will still milk everything that you got. He will use you and still send your stubborn behind to hell. So don't think you ain't good with God just because he uses you. Okay, all right, all right. The Jesus style of healing is the same as the Jesus style of living. So let's not just get all caught up in, ooh, I want, I want to be used in Jesus style of healing. Be healed. You better be used in the Jesus style of living. The Jesus style of healing comes out of the yeah. Jesus style of living. When you live like Jesus, you can heal like Jesus. You can speak like Jesus. You can command like Jesus. You can declare like Jesus. I said this before. If you have the name, I'm a Christian. I'm a Jesus Christian. If you have the name, but don't have the nature, Jesus. you are an imposter. Oh yes. And imposters have zero authority in the supernatural realm. 
Because the devil knows the true you. So make sure you're living from behind closed doors. How are you living however you want to live, listening to any type of music you want, smoking whatever you want, sex anywhere you want, and then you come against a cancer demon and say, I command you to come out. And that cancer demon said, are you literally <laughs> trying to cast me out? Don't you know I'm a spirit? I know you. I know you. You let all kind of stuff get in you. And so now you're trying to cast me out. You don't have any power. Amen. That reminds me of um, my spiritual grandfather, Apostle Arturo Skinner. Back in his day, this, this, this evangelist was trying to cast this demon out, trying to cast him out. That demon spoke through him and spoke through that person and said, you can't cast me out. Apostle Arturo Skinner can cast me out, but you can't cast me out. You don't have the power like he does. <laughs> what in the world would happen? You go to lay hands on somebody and say, you can't get me here. You don't have the power to get me here. I know what you did last summer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead. There are three reasons why Jesus heals People, And they're the same three reasons why we should as well. We've got to get the heart of Christ. We've got to get the mind. Let this, no other mind, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Why did the first word say let? which in the Greek means allow, because we don't allow the mind of Christ. That's a command. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. All right, let's move forward. John 5, 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. Hmm. But what he seeth, E-T-H on the end of any word means to continue. But what he continues to see, seeth the Father do. For what thing soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Now, Jesus heals because that's what his father does. This is reason number one, just in case you're missing it. Reason number one, Jesus heals because that's what his father does. And that's what we should do because he's our father also. I only do what I see my father do. Does God want people healed? Does God heal people? Is God our father? Are we to be like our father? We need to get people healed. Yes, amen. Just based off of that one right there, I could put this back in my pocket and sit down. <laughs> the Father does it. Yes. I taught here maybe about a year and a half ago. I looked up in the Greek, and when Jesus said, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do, it's literally translated in the Greek as if I don't see my father do it, I can't do it. If I don't see him do it, I can't do it. I can only do what I see my father do. What happens to us in healing? Somebody comes to us and we immediately want to lay hands. What if that's not what the father did? What if, if when, when, when the, the Holy Spirit shows us a vision of how the Father wants to heal them, we like to just immediately, what if he just wanted you to speak to it? What if he wanted to use a sign by telling them to stoop first? Because the only way you're going to get, what do you mean a sign? Sometimes God uses signs and wonders to bring about healings. For example, somebody has trouble with their heart. 
So the Holy Spirit shows me, and then this is the way the Holy Spirit uses me. All right, and Lord, I pray that you will give this to them in, in your own way, in Jesus' name, amen. The way the Holy Spirit uses me, I'll see myself do something before I do it. That is the way the Holy Spirit shows me what the Father is doing. So somebody here has problems with their heart, and um, um, maybe blocked arteries or something like that. And so I'm standing here, and the Holy Spirit shows me telling them to do something, and they do it. So I say, okay, stoop. What? Yeah, stoop. No, stoop lower. Stoop as low as you can. All right, stay there for a little while. All right, get back up. Stoop again. Get back up. Like, no, it's not my legs, it's my heart. No, stoop again. Get back up. The Lord told me to tell you that the reason why you're having heart problems is because of the pride in your heart, and you need to come low and humble yourself. That was just a sign and a wonder. It's a sign to you that you've been too high. And because of all this pride, it has literally created heart problems here. So you need to stoop. Now, what if I would have laid hands and just, and just commanded and did all that? You missed the whole thing. That's not how God, and they don't get healed. One man, blind, Jesus laid hands. Another man, blind, he spit, made mud, put on the eyes, said, go watch. It's different ways. Lazarus dead. Lazarus, come forth. A man dead. Jesus just lays hands on him. It's just different applications. Different administrations or ministrations. However he wants to do it. We have to first find out. We have to find out. So I do what I see my father do. If you didn't see your father do it, if the Holy Spirit didn't tell you what to do, if you don't know how to do it, don't do anything. Some people, Jesus just healed immediately. We're talking about the Jesus style now. Some people, he just healed. Some people, he interviewed. How long has your son been like this? Uh, Why haven't you gotten in the pool? To, to get healed. Well, I mean, you know, before I can get in there, when the angels trouble the water, somebody else gets in there before me. He interviewed people. It's okay to do that. And now that I'm thinking about it, something else that I see a lot of people do that Jesus didn't do often at all. Matter of fact, it was extremely rare for him to do it. We will pray for people and then ask them, how you feeling? Is the pain gone? How many times did Jesus ask him, is the pain gone? Very rare. He asked this, he prayed. One time he asked this man, what do you see? I see men as trees. Prayed again. What do you see? I see men as they are. Jesus didn't often ask that. Do you know where we got that from? We're trying to let people know that we powerful, we strong. So we pray for people, is it gone? Come on, is it gone? To excite the people. If Jesus didn't say ask, that's why a lot of times you see me, I'll pray for the sick and stuff, and then I'm done. Say, but you ain't asking them if they well. Jesus didn't tell me to ask them if they well. I didn't see that in the vision. Some people say, well, they probably ain't even get healed. I'm not moved by your skepticism. I'm not moved to try to convince you that I'm anointed. I'm moved by the Holy Spirit. You can be a skeptic. Oh, all right. Okay. And that's only the first reason. Matthew 14, 14, and hallelujah. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. And was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. 
second reason why Jesus heals. Notice I'm not saying healed, heals, continues to heal. According to God's divine purpose, because this comes out of the heart of God. We really have to understand this. All of this comes from God's heart. All right. This is acting a fool. Y'all got another clicker that y'all can bring out here? Let me, let me try one more time. Go. There it is. Come up. There it is. Jesus heals people. He just needed some healing. Jesus heals people because he has what? Compassion on them. And we should have the same genuine compassion. He had compassion. We want to get people healed so people can see we got some power. Compassion. Why do you think Jesus, as I said a little bit ago, why do you think he interviewed? How long has your son been like this? What's going on? My son has been, you know, I try to take him to your disciples and they couldn't. How long am I going to be with y'all? Y'all get on my nerves, disciples. So what's going on with your son? Well, you know, this is happening and that is happening. He's, sometimes he throws himself in the fire. Sometimes he throws himself in the water. And how long? He's been this way since the boy. Interview. Compassion. Interviewing builds compassion. Interviewing builds compassion. Jesus operates through compassion. If you're about to pray for somebody and you don't have compassion for them. Now, let me say this. The Holy Spirit just, just, just now said this to me. Have all three reasons operating. Have all three reasons operating when, please write that down or type that in your notes. Because the Holy Spirit just said this to me. Have all three of these reasons. I know we're just on number two. But have all three of them operating. For ultimate success. He heals people because he has compassion. Interview. Think about their lives. One of the best ways to have compassion on somebody. Is to say. Wow. If I was going through this, I would want somebody to pray for me. I'd want somebody to care for me if I was going through this. Man. And you don't even have to imagine. Of course, we know the Bible says casting down imagination, so we're not supposed to imagine. So what we do is interview them. I don't have to imagine if you're going to tell me what you're going through. Amen. What is it like? I can't, I, it takes me... 30 minutes to get up every morning just to slide to the side of my bed and stand up. It takes me 30 minutes every morning. Every morning. Every morning. Every morning. Builds compassion. How long have you had this? It's going on 12 years you've been doing it. It builds compassion. We're in such a microwave society. We just want to just lay hands on people and say, oh, God's going to do it. No. We have to flow. Take your time. If you care about somebody, if you have compassion, you're going to take your time. He had compassion and healed them. Do y'all see how much time is in Matthew 14, 14? How many people were there? A great multitude. How long does it take to heal a great multitude? But it's compassion. Y'all church started at 11 o'clock. I need to be out here by at least 12, 15. Takes time. Takes time. I'll just leave. Good. You can, you can leave. We don't have armed guards at the door. Keep you in. But 
But you're going to leave with your sickness. You're going to leave with not getting your deliverance. You're going to leave without getting the fullness. Give God time. And you know, that's what we do in prayer, too. You say, you know, I got about 15 minutes going in prayer. God ain't showing up to that. Give God 15 minutes. I got five minutes. So God's supposed to really show up in a big way? No. He's not that cheap. All right. Matthew 9, 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Every. The Jesus style is not there are 12 people here and only 10 are healed. Every. How many of the 10 lepers were healed? All of them. This is the Jesus style. We said it in our minds, a, a crowd like this this morning of about maybe 80 people, you know, you might have about 10 people who need prayer, maybe 20, and you expect about 50%. That's never the mindset, never the mindset. The only mindset is every, every. We're not talking about us. We focused on ourselves. Well, what if it doesn't work? I'm not focused on Shane Wall. I'm focusing on Jesus healing. Then, this is Luke 9, verses 1 and 2. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. How did he do that? I preached this a little while ago, a good while ago. How did Jesus do that? How did he give them power and authority over devils? How did he give them power to cure diseases? Jesus is king. The way kings pass laws is simply by speaking. In a democracy, we have to vote. In a kingdom, there's no voting. Whatever the king says, the king passes laws the moment words pass his lips. That's why the Pharaoh could say, you're going to do this, this many going to get killed. That's just it. That's why the king was able to say every little child during the time Jesus was born, every little child, kill him. Every male child, all these little kids, kill him. King, whatever I say goes. So when Jesus says, you have power, you got power. He spoke it. When the king speaks it, it's done. Does it not apply to us that we have power over all the power of the devil? Does that not apply to us? Did not the king say that? Then is it not law? Even people who disobey the law still know the law. Even people who don't agree with the law, they better abide by the law. Sicknesses, diseases, all these demonic things, they know the law because Jesus spoke the law. So demons know the law. Ever since Adam and Eve, demons have been trying to get us to not live according to the law, even in healing. It's law. We have power over devils. But when we think of something, ooh, diabetes, wow, gracious day. It's really going to take the power of God. It's really going to take the power of God for a toothache. It don't take no more power from God to heal AIDS as it does lower back pain. Please know that. Ooh, we really need to bust it. No, it's the same. It's the same power of God. Same exact. 
For real? Yes, for real. It's God's power. So does God have to stand up and yell when it's cancer versus if it's just a headache? Is not the word of God just enough? I mean, come on. Your, your father created fish by speaking. And I don't mean just one kind. All kinds of fish. Let there be fish. How many kinds? Fish we ain't never seen before that's extinct now. We'll never know. Just by speaking. Holy Spirit just said to me, the problem is we see the sickness bigger than God. Well, maybe, maybe God wants them to have it. Please show that to me in the word of God. I have the sickness because God is trying to teach me a lesson. Well, because Jesus was the expressed image of God, then that means Jesus must have put sickness on somebody at some point in time to teach them a lesson. Please find that in any version. If you want to know what God, Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do. So if you see my father, if you see me do it, that's what my father's doing. So let's get all this other stuff out of our minds. All right. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Here we go, the kingdom of God again. Matthew 9, 35, Luke 9, 1 and 2, and then Luke 10 and 9, and heal the sick that are therein and say to them, the kingdom of God is come nigh or near. In the Greek, it means it's here, not near. It is right here. The kingdom of God has come nigh to you. Jesus heals people to prove the authorized kingdom of God's existence on the earth through us. He heals people. The kingdom of God is here. Yeah, prove it. Okay. In, in your realm, can you heal the sick? No, we don't have that problem. My kingdom is here. So let me prove to you my kingdom is here. That's why he said, preach the kingdom, get them healed. Preach the kingdom, get them healed. Because we have to prove the existence of God's kingdom and how authoritative it is. We not only exist, but we have authority over this earthly realm. We take this earthly realm and we say, ooh, something has happened. And we think that the supernatural kingdom realm that's in us has to come subject to what we see here, fear. Feel, smell, taste. No, 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 no. No. You've been living here too long that you done adapted to the world. Done adapted to the world. Be not conformed to what? This world. Be not conformed to it. But be ye transform change into something else don't be like these worldly people how will you transform by the renewing of what you talked about last night pastor of your mind stop thinking that don't be conformed to this world i mean hey case of us what will be what be will be it is what it is no it's not <laughs> Healing is our governmental right. Yes, and accessing this benefit requires an application. What happens in the government? If you have a right, if there's a benefit that the government grants, you have to apply for it. There are some people right now who the government could be taking care of something in their lives. But number one, they don't know about it. Number two, they don't know how to apply for the assistance. The kingdom of God is a form of government. Healing is a benefit. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his who heals 
all of thy diseases. It's a benefit. In the kingdom of God, healing is. But you got to apply for it. You have to go through an application process. There are some people right now, for example, God bless my father with a $20,000 grant. A grant. Didn't have to pay it back. All I had to do was apply for it. $20,000 grant to fix his house. Brand new roof, painting, brand new air conditioning system. Didn't have to pay one penny. But all I had to do was apply. It's a benefit. It's a benefit. So, we're going to have to do what we see Jesus do. We're going to have to have compassion. And we have to preach the gospel of the kingdom. What's the gospel of the kingdom? Whatever the king says goes. The kingdom is here in us. So now we have to be healed because it's governmental right. How do we apply? How can I apply? What is the application process to get my healing? I'll tell you next Sunday. (laughs) How to apply. I'm sure you'll be back. Somebody said, no, 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 I need that. You'll get it. You'll get it. So that's healing the Jesus style. Don't listen, y'all got enough homework to, do, to work on seeing God do something. You got to get that down packed. You got to get your compassion down packed. And you got to go learn about the kingdom of God. Amen. So for me to go any further is just too much homework for you. So go get those things down packed. All right. Jesus didn't with the disciples. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. But before he healed, he didn't say, come on, John. Andrew, yo, come on, hold hands. No, no, I've, I've said this before. Come on, they need some healing. Come on. Oh, Father, we bless you. Come on, sing. We bless you. You are so wonderful. Come on, come on, come on. And Lord. No, they didn't. Jesus didn't do that. That wasn't his style. It wasn't his style. The way other people do it, praise the Lord. Benny Hinn said it openly. Over 80% of the people who get healed in his ministry lose their healing. Over 80%. Tony Kemp said to me, he said, oh, I failed to do something. My goodness, he said, I forgot to tell the people how to keep their healing. Tell them to read healing scriptures three times a day for 10 days. Three times a day for 10 days. He, and then when the sickness tries to come back, speak to us. Uh-uh, I'm already healed. The thief comes not just to say, oh, you got a pretty house. The word of God said the thief comes to do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's why the thief comes. Yes. The devil wants to steal. And it's not even stealing your healing. Amen. It, it, that, that, that terminology is off. A lot of people say, don't let the devil take your healing. No, it's not your healing. It's your health. Amen. The healing has already occurred. Now you're healthy. Yes. He just wants to do what he did before. Take your health. 
So we have to understand that I was healthy. And then the sickness came and took my health. And the Holy Spirit is saying this now, so you have to know this. Every sickness is not a demon or a devil. It doesn't come from God. Some things you keep eating salt yeah. like you're going crazy. Yeah. Devil gave me high blood pressure. No, your wrist gave you high blood pressure. Yeah. Putting salt on everything before you even taste it. Haven't even tasted it. Your wrist gave you high blood pressure. Nothing but the devil. Come on. I'm just, I'm just saying. Can't blame the devil for everything. Some things the devil like, no, nah, I ain't even do that. I wish I would have. but I, I can't even take the credit for that. It's true. Smoke two packs a day. Get throat cancer. The devil is a liar. No, he ain't. He's telling the truth. You have throat cancer. You definitely have it. It's there. Everything the devil said in a liar isn't a lie. He is a liar, but everything he says isn't a lie. What did you do to get it? Huh? I just said some things. Now, some things, it is definitely a demon. And you can get rid of that. Um, one thing Jesus did was rebuke. And I think it's good for me to reteach this or either to introduce this to some people. A lot of times when we talk about rebuking the devil, what we do is we say, devil, I rebuke you. I rebuke you right now. That's totally incorrect. You never rebuke a devil by saying the word rebuke. The word rebuke Literally means to show disapproval of, to sharply censor. It's the same word as fuss. That's what it is. So when we say Satan, I rebuke you, that's just, that's just like the Johnsons tell you to do something as their son and you don't do it. And they say, I fuss at you. I fuss, I'm fussing at you right now. Right now, I'm fussing at you. I'm, oh, I'm fussing at you. I am fussing. It's the same thing we do when we say, I rebuke you. Devil, I rebuke you. No, you literally rebuke him. I told you to take that trash out and you didn't take it out. Why are you still sitting here and the trash is still, I mean, piled up more than before. Now you're going to have to make more. I told you, need to get up and go get that. I told you. That's literally rebuking. And that's what we're supposed to do. If we see our father do that first. Jesus rebuked the wind when it was storming. And they said, Jesus, we're going to perish. You sitting here sleeping. He rebuked the wind. Told it what to do, what not to do. Whole nine yards. And he rebuked it by saying, peace. Be still. Some children that like, like my son, thank the Lord. I don't have to go through a long, drawn-out rebuke. He's doing something all I got to say is, Joshua. That's enough rebuke right there. <laughs> That's it. He said, uh-uh. He knows what that means. And if he's in a good mood, he'll look back at me and say, In other words, I got it, but hey, you caught me, you caught me. So, what is God doing right now? He loves us so much and has compassion on us and his kingdom is here within us, here in the earth empowering us to bring forth healing of some of the diseases. 
Uh, some of y'all caught on a little later, but you got it. All manner of sickness and disease. But before we do that, is there anyone here who's not saved, or if you're listening or watching, you're not saved, you do not know Jesus, you don't have that right relationship with him. Or you were saved and uh, you left him, and now you need to come back to him. If you're here, please raise your hand. I want to pray with you. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you. Anyone. And let me say this, because the reason why I'm teaching this, don't say, well, you know, this is for the ministers. No, this is for everybody. Everybody. Mark 16, Jesus said for us to preach. And then he said, those who believe will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Those who believe. It's not the preachers. We always look to the preacher. Do you know why preachers have to pray for the sick? Because y'all don't. That's why the preachers have to do it when we get up. Because y'all don't pray for them. We're supposed to preach. Jesus was very clear about that. You preach. Those who believe will cast out devils, speak in new tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Y'all the ones supposed to have healing ministries, not the preachers. Is that, am I in the book? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the scripture. But we have to end up doing it because I'm not doing it. See, that's called a rebuke. That's how you rebuke somebody. But now you know. And I, I'm thinking this is going to be a three-part. It may go to five parts, teaching about Jesus, the healing style. But y'all got enough right now to go ahead and start getting people healed. You got enough. You got enough right now. So, and I said, I said that as a preface to what I'm about to say now. Make sure you offer salvation before praying for the sick. There is no miracle greater than salvation. None. If 100 people ran in here right now and all of them dropped dead and I said, get up in the name of Jesus Christ, and all 100 were raised from the dead, that miracle is nowhere near as important as one four-year-old Saying, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Jesus died for me, and you raised him from me. Salvation is the greatest miracle. And when we operate in salvation first, every miracle comes under that. Every miracle. If you can believe God for salvation, if you can operate in salvation, Raising somebody from the dead or getting somebody healed of whatever is second, third dairy. I know it's tertiary, I'm just saying. Always think salvation. Always, always, always. That's why we're supposed to witness. Always. Knowing sometimes people will reject salvation and accept healing. And after they get healed, then they want to get saved. So be mindful. Sorry, now God doesn't heal you. Now give your life to the Lord. Some people say, God, if you heal me, I'll live for you. And they've held true to that. Some have not, but some have. God don't just put the sickness back on you. That's not how he operates. He said, my son will judge you at the end. Let the wheat and the tares grow together. We'll separate you at the end. So again, is there anyone here? You need to come to the Lord. Just raise your hand. I want to pray with you. Please don't leave here unsaved. I don't, I don't know when Jesus is, is coming back. I have no clue. None whatsoever. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Every, every one of you. If you're here and you need to give your life to God, you need to repent. 
You need to come to God. If you're in here, I want you to come up to the altar. And if you're listening and watching, I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. And I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father, I come before you right now by Jesus Christ. And I thank you for Jesus who died for me. I know that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Thank you, Father, for raising Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. For saving my soul. Forgiving my sins. My life belongs only to you. Not to myself. And not to anyone else. Thank you so much for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's praise God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Now, of course, is there anyone here, you're sick in any way, you have something that the enemy has brought on you, or it's something that you brought on you by not properly taking care of your body? And you're in here. I want you to stand up. All right. Thank you, Father. God, you're good. Okay, cool. I was just about right. There's 18 people. I said about 20. 10, 20. That's cool. So I said, how can you joke in a time like this? This is the Jesus style. Amen. We're not about to speak in tongues and worship songs right now. All right? Yeah, Jesus style. Oh, if, you, if you're really anointed by God, God already knows your personality, and he anointed you. All right? Hallelujah to God. Now, those who are standing... The only thing you are required to do is to have faith in God. That is it. Have your faith in God. Of course, there's no faith in me. It's just faith in God. What we just learned. That's all it is. Just have faith in God. Knowing that God loves you so much that he wants you healed because that is a governmental benefit. I already know the application process. I, I can go forth, so that's nothing to worry about. So now, the compassion comes simply because you stood. Simply because you, and you heard everybody say, yeah. You heard them say, yeah. All right, good. More people said, yeah, over here, so I'm going to come over here. <laughs> Who on this side... You say, filled with the Holy Ghost, you speak in tongues, you know God for real. Who on this side who is sitting down, you have never, ever, ever prayed for somebody to be healed and they were healed? Let me see your hand. Never, never prayed for somebody to be healed? Okay, come up, come up, come up. Three of you, come up. See, I preach. Y'all, you thought I was going to pray for them? Ha! <laughs> This, I'm doing it the Jesus style. Jesus was the one that said, y'all pray for the sick. I preach to y'all. Y'all pray for the sick and get them healed. All right, cool. And I, each one of y'all three, pick one. What in the world kind of church is this? The Jesus style. Yeah, pick one. Oh, you got yours? You got yours? Go ahead. Pick one. Oh, you got Okay, cool. All right. 
So now based on what I taught, what, what are you going to do? What's the first thing you're going to do? Are y'all enjoying this? Yeah. Okay, good. Um. Uh -huh. What's the first? No, tell me what is the first thing you're supposed to do? Hmm? For her salvation. That's good. Are you, are you saying? Yeah. I'm sorry. You're supposed to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. And now what? Would you like to be healed? Yes. All right. She said, do you want to be healed? Do you believe? Amen. So um, because we in public, we want to ask, you know, is it a private situation or can she say what the problem is? Okay. Maybe I'll need a microphone, David. Maybe I will. She she said that um, she has problems with her hands, and the carpal tunnel has gone all the way up. And she said God told her not to have surgery. I wonder why God told her not to have surgery. Oh, because he's going to hey, look at y'all. My goodness. Huh? I'm almost at a breaking point, so I do believe that God is going to heal me, but it's keeping me from sleeping and doing some of the things I need to do. Now, what she just shared, what did that just build in us? I can drop the mic. Y'all got it. Y'all see how easy this is? Now, is she about to get healed right now? See how you have y'all faith? You see how easy this is? It is. Okay, so what's next? How? Open up your heart. Your mind. That's what God just told you. Remember? I do what I see my father, see my father do. So what is the father telling you to do? How are we gonna get her healed? Is that what he said? No. What did he say? Or what did he show you? You want me to help you out? Okay, cool. I want you to lift that arm up. All the way up. All the way up. All the way up. Now I want you to wave it in a circle. Just like that. Just like that. All right, now keep waving it. Close your eyes. Take this hand, your right hand, and lay hands uh -uh, on her. Now, I want you to command all the nerves to come into alignment. I command all the nerves to come into alignment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All right. Don't take your hand off. Put this hand right next to that one, right on her head. Go close. Go close. Go close. Hand, not fingers. Hand. He said lay hands, not fingers. Hallelujah. Yep. All right, Holy Spirit said it's done. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Yeah, it's done. Thank you, Lord. Okay, who's next? You, you, oh. Oh, you helping. You already healed. No. What? Okay, go ahead. Praise the Lord. So, what, uh, tell me what you are experiencing. Uh, so I have. Uh, I feel like a Benny Hinn thing, you know. Go back to that. <laughs> so I have a uh, really bad lower back pain, um, and uh, I've had it for as long as I can remember. And when Ooh. I went to, you mean like four uh, years old? Well, when I went to the doctor. I'm sorry, I dog. I'm, I, <laughs> I can't help it. Go ahead. When I went to the doctor when I was little, um, my mom said the doctor said my back is like arched in a weird way and mm. it just said that's just how it is and I'm not sure if that's why it I is what it is see mm -hmm. 
and I'm not sure if that's why I have the lower back pain, but um, like I've had different ones pray and it'll be relieved a little bit, but it comes back. And um, when I'm serving on different capacities or like have to stand up for a long period of time, like hospitality, it really hurts my back and the lower part. How many of y'all in here know Jordan? Let me see your hand. Put your hands down. Now, how many of y'all have more compassion for her now than you did a few minutes ago? Because you didn't know this was happening to her. Jesus uses that. Um, so that's the main thing. Okay, now what's have. next? Oh, that's the main. One more thing. Oh, it's one more thing. <laughs> Multiple healings. <laughs> is it okay to say? Okay. <laughs> is it okay that you heal me in more than one thing? Though? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Okay, so the other thing is I've had it all my life as well. Um, and it's like um, the, the, one of the doctors, she called it like. Uh, uh, sinus congestion, but I'm really not sure. Um, but like, it's like right in here, my um, eyes are, they darken a lot sometimes. And I've had it since I was a little girl. And, um, and um, she gave me like this um, medicine to take, but I don't want to be on it for the rest of my life. And um, it makes the Bye -bye. eyes, you know, lessen or whatever. And I, you know, I've eaten healthy. I don't, I'm not one that eats a whole bunch of junk and stuff. I eat very healthy in my body and it still has just, you know, it still doesn't go. Now in the natural, I know that any time, was that? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, that's right. See, there I go again. No, well. Go ahead. With the sinuses, and, and I was going to ask you, because what I'm hearing, that even though you eat healthy, sometimes, since a little girl, sometimes it's dairy, sometimes it's milk. So it could be some natural. Is that what you're thinking? That's exactly well, praise it. praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> and salt. Most times when you think of infection, sinus infection, ear infection, take salt completely out of your diet. Sodium causes that you can eat healthy and you can buy something that's healthy that already has salt in it you don't have to add it it's high in sodium already yeah with the um, back pain what I was getting is is because since she was really young generationally you help me I, I'm you know no 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 her. you flowing because you were looking up and so well, that means you seeing really with your father's side I know the know signs what God is saying but also, this is new, so trying to make sure. You know, mm -hmm. I prayed before, but not instantly healing, of course. I understand. So um, that sometimes the enemy, try, through your generation line, try to attack, have something here because of what you're going to do in the future and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to hinder you with that piece. Um, so it might be lunch. So in other words, the second one was more maybe Let me ask you something. Why did you go and touch her back just then? I don't know. I know you don't. <laughs> You did what you saw your father do. It was perfect. Thank you, Lord. And then can I share something else? She's already been healed of the Lord back when Thank you, you Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's deal with the um, eyes and things. How are we going to deal with that? Oh, you already spoke on that. So that, that was that? Well, I mean, we can pray. What is the father showing you well I'll also the, the dietary what we just said okay we can certainly pray to help her with that area. okay certainly what is God saying or showing <laughs> you concerning it did he did he show you or say anything mm, I'm unclear good if he says nothing do nothing okay. the instructions were enough we don't have to overdo it. We don't have to over spiritualize it. If that's all he gave you, that's all that's needed. You got your multiple healings as according to your own testimony. Amen. All right. So please tell me who in here you can't do this. You just, there's no way in the world you can do this. You're scared and everything else. Exactly. All right. Are y'all enjoying all of this for yourselves? Good. Okay. Um, are you saved? Yes. Okay, can you tell me what's going on with you today? Uh, I went to the doctor in Columbia, South Carolina. They said I was bipolar, schizophrenia, I'm not none of the above. I took the medicine and took it because I was ordered by the court. Dr. Um, the doctor Mohini, whatever his name was, he ordered me to take the medicine. I was falling out, I was a yin, all that junk food. I'm not about that. 
And I will see you. I go to church up there. I sing for the Lord. I sell my Pastor John Will church. He said, we don't know him. Then the army people came and said, we know him. He said, we know your sister. We know your brother. Okay. So. Well known. Mm. What's next? Um, just, I'm just thinking to, to pray. and Because it, it could be, um, I'm not sure. I'm thinking of. Um, do you have compassion for her yet? Yes, did she absolutely, did absolutely. she say yes. enough? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. What's next? Um, well, the next step is to hear what the Lord is telling you to do okay. for All right. for her. And um, I'm just prayer. Um, now, the only reason why I'm not stressing the kingdom of God with these three is because I just preached it. So they were already here and heard what the king says goes, all right? But individually, you'll want to do that because people you pray for may not be here right now, all right? Okay. I gave you a little time to hear what God is saying or see what God <laughs> You have anything yet? Um, no, I, I I think I need some help with this one. You need some help? Okay, I want you to put both of your hands on your head, just just like this. Uh, the way I saw it was more like that, all right? Hands, not fingers. Y'all in the finger ministry this morning. Both of you, no, side by side, not on top of each other. That's the way I saw it right there. Now, you put both of your hands on top of hers, just like that, side by side. side. That's the way it was seen. Now, oh yeah, he's already given you what to say. Go ahead, speak it out. No whisper. Mandreke shinga yon roko, mandreke yama yon reke shinki yama korosha yon rebeke shinga yamo koroshinga, mandreke shinga rebeke shinko, mo korosh, leke yon roko moroshi mander kan roko roshinga mandra ka moroshi ka yon reke yon roko moroshi ne. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you, that was absolutely perfect because I was going to tell you to touch her stomach because I saw you touch her stomach, but you did it already. So you're healed in Jesus' name. Believe God. Mm -hmm. We believe God. Now, as I, as I tell you that you're healed, I'm believing by faith with you. I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you, you don't take your medicine, you don't have it anymore. I say that in faith and by faith with you. Do you believe that you're healed? Yes. Huh? Yes. Hello. You said yes. All right. Do you believe that you're healed? Mm -hmm. Huh? My back started feeling better when I sat down. Your back started feeling better when you sat down. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's really not a healing testimony because you said when you stand up a long time, it hurts. So feeling better when you sit down, that's just natural. It was hurting all that time, and when I sat down before, it was hurting. Okay, yeah. so even the sit-down hurt yeah. is gone. All right, now we got it. <laughs> Who was the, the other person? Do you believe you've been healed? How, why do you believe that? Oh, come, come, come. Jerome, take that to her, please. I felt like some of my veins in my hand when she put her hands on me, and when you asked me did I believe, like a tingling I could feel in my hands so I can feel some of the process starting to feel better. Praise the Lord. And of course, the other part of this is making sure that they have faith to believe. Faith to believe. Now, everybody else is standing, come line up here facing me just for the sake of time. I wanted Parks to be here for the rest of the day with us, but he has to fly out. But he'll be flying out healed in Jesus' name. Amen, Amen to God.
Now, when I come to you, if you can say what it is in like just two or three words, please do so. If it's private, just say private. All right. Um, this week, my car caught on fire while I was in it. Three words. No, I'm sorry. And Go ahead. I just had to say this to the church. This yeah. week, my car caught on fire while I was in it, and I really don't know how I got out of the car, but I really know it was God that got me out, and my nerves have been bad ever since because it was such a traumatizing experience, and I haven't been able to sleep as much. Okay. This just happened this week, but... Okay. Nerves. Gotcha. Yes. Autoimmune disease. Now, do y'all have compassion on it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Hmm? Autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease. Body breakouts everywhere. Body breakouts everywhere. Arthritis. Arthritis. Where? In my hip. In your hip. Assisted breath. Assisted breast. Okay. Yeah. Heart. Heart. High blood pressure. High blood pressure. Are you the one with the wrist? No, that oh, okay. You don't <laughs> put something. I have, more. <laughs> I have more than one. Diabetes. Uh, hypertension. You have more than one type of diabetes? No, one, um, more than one uh, a health problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, diabetes, um, hypertension, drop foot, nerve damage, um, sinus problems, and problems with blurriness. And uh, right now, I'm uh, very dizzy. Okay, right now, as we speak, you're very dizzy. Okay, cool. Hurt people hurt other people. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got you. I got you. I got you. So you, you're dealing with some hurt that you need from, healing. From my childhood. From your childhood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Undiagnosed body aches throughout. Okay. Do you preach? I do. I'm about to say, because um, all the gifts kind of start working. Thyroid. Thyroid. Uh, mind problem. Mind problem? Mind problem. Okay. Uh, pH balance in my body. pH balance in your body. All right. Is God able to heal? Yes. Does God want to heal Every single one of them? Okay, good. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. All of you up here, lift your hands to God as a sign that I surrender to you these problems. This is a part of your application process. Father, you're my king. And you want me healed because I am not only a servant, but I'm your child. Just as a parent would take a child with a 103 fever immediately to the emergency room for healing. Father, I stand before you as your child who I know you love. I know you love me. I know you. And in your kingdom, all you have to do is speak, and it's done. And so, Father, I have faith in you. I know you love me. I know you want me well. I know you want me healed. I know you want me whole completely. Your word says that you created the earth to be inhabited. You don't want me in heaven. You don't want me dead and in heaven. You want me here on the earth. And you want me whole while I'm here. So, Father, I'm standing before you so that you can heal me. And I know you're going to heal me. So I receive it from you, believing and knowing that it's done right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. I got you. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be. Be healed. Be healed. One thing you want to do, if, if, if the Holy Spirit says to lay hands just as you saw operated uh, over there at, the, at, at, at your far left, 
You lay hands until he finishes. Let him know. Or or rather, wait till he lets you know when he is finished with your laying on of hands. Be healed in Jesus' name. You be healed. Be healed. Put your right hand on, on the hip that has the problem. Was it both of them? Just that one? That was God. I didn't know it was the right hip. Be healed in Jesus' name. You, Eddie, be healed. Be healed. Both of your hands here. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be, be, be. Carling, be healed. Be healed. Your right hand first, then this one. Parks, be healed. Be, 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 be healed, be, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. Ah, oh, shallow. That's our guy. Be healed. Ah, oh. oh. You file forces, we come for you now. Go! In Jesus' name. Be healed. Hi, hi, hi. Sweetheart, be healed. Be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. Every one of you, go. Go, I said in Jesus' name. Flows God's power and anointing and favor for healing. (sighs) Say, I am healed right now. I am healed right now. I believe from my heart. I believe from my and heart. I confess with my mouth. And I confess with my I mouth. am made whole. I am made whole. And Father, and Father whatever, whatever you lead me to do, lead me to do with, diet, with diet, exercise, exercise ooh, communication with you, communication with you, reading of your word, reading of your word, the thoughts that I think, the thoughts that I, think I will only be led of you. I will be led of you. My healing comes from you, comes from you and my health, will remain my health will remain because of you. Because of you. Yep. Now take it from your father now in Jesus' name. You just take, take it, take, take, take it. Goes, every one of you. Go, every one of you. Mm-hmm. And don't come back in Jesus' name. Ooh. Hallelujah. Uh, Father, I thank you for this son. I thank you, Father, that the hurt that you can use to make stronger and more wiser has already occurred. Now the sting of it brings his mind back to it. And Father, even now as you're saying, even as he quiets himself and thinks of the occurrences over and over and over again, I pray and instruct him now that the very next time that thought comes, that you will forgive immediately the one who offended you. Immediately. Every time the thought comes, Say, they owe me nothing. God loves them. And I love them. I hear God saying, self-healing by your words. Self-healing by your own words. Thank you for it, God. Your word, son, will bring the healing. Every time that thought comes, I forgive them. They owe me nothing. God loves them. Those are the only three things he said. I forgive them. They owe me nothing. God loves them. Oh, God said even a fresh anointing on you as well for your ministry. I see you ministering more out in the streets too, just delivering what God gives you. Body be healed because I command it in the name of Jesus. I command it. Yep. That's it. Healing for you right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Flows. That's it. And Father, I thank you and I bless you and I praise you. 
Oh, I see clouds. I just blow the clouds away. Thank you, Father. Lord, I bless you. I praise you. I give you glory and honor for complete and total healing. Mm -hmm. Don't you dare come back. Don't you dare come back. Excuse me. Don't you dare come back. I said, don't you dare come back. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. When you were jumping just then, the, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you to exercise. You need to exercise. Thank you, Lord. Stretching exercises. Um, I think Tremaine knows about stretching stuff. Ask him about some good stretching exercises. I know some where you put your hands on the wall, put your leg back like this, and lean forward. It'll stretch this, then change to the other side and do that. Also, in anybody with lower back pain, you can do this. You get, you lay on your back, and you put your, your hands up just like this. You put your feet, your foot right there, and push, push, push. It's going to pull all of this. A lot of stuff that's called lower back isn't lower back. But it's the muscles. See, what do you call these things? Huh? Hamstrings. It's these things right here. Strings with ham on them. Right here. Okay. And then you, you push, 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 push. And it's going to really, 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 really hurt. Push, push, push. And then um, release and then do the other foot. Get up. It's going to be amazing. But that is, you can use that as an exercise as well as pain relief as well. Amen. God bless you. I love y'all so much. So, so much. Glory be to God. Have to thank God again for all of y'all helping me celebrate my 50th birthday yesterday. Amen. 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 And my brother Mitch Jones from Commission and his wife Carlene King. And Parks Stewart. Now, see, a lot of people don't know Mitch and Parks wrote Commission songs together. What, what are some of the songs y'all wrote together? Ordinary Just Won't Do. Hold Me. Victory. I Am Here. And he sang, even though he wasn't on the cover, he sang the background. Sang the background on the commission albums. Thank y'all so much for coming. Thank you for surprising. And I got to sing with them last night. Mind blown. Thank y'all again. I love y'all so much. Y'all go and get people healed. Amen. All right. God bless you. Amen.